I don't know how to solve the problem of the umbrella. There's nothing I like about umbrellas. They uh, <laughs> seriously, Tim, they blow up in wind so that they're easily wrecked under the conditions that they're supposed to be in which they're supposed to be used. They uh, have these long metal spikes at about eye level. So they're clearly a safety hazard. Your legs always get drenched. There you go. Everything about the umbrella strikes me as wrong. Now, what I believe is, is that there are, and I've seen people try to innovate in the umbrella situation. Uh, there are ones that have air blowers that blow the water away from you. There are funky um, folding designs, but I am almost positive that there exists some very simple mechanical design that would uh, improve the umbrella. On the other hand, I don't have that same confidence about the coffee mug. Yes, you could put some electronics in it. You can make it smarter than it is. But fundamentally, it seems to be in such a simple state that I wouldn't think that I should innovate there. So if I can give the example where there is a solution known, luggage before 1989. just going to ask you about this. All right. So um, it turns out that nobody really knew how to do wheeled luggage before 1989. <laughs> it's until just mind-blowing. Anyway, yeah. It's, well, it's hard to imagine that like the whole world had their, wed their heads wedged so far up there that they couldn't think to put in these large... Uh, recessed wheels with a telescoping handle. And this was the invention of a guy named Robert Plath, who was a pilot for Northwest, I think. And in one fell swoop, uh, he convinced everyone that their old luggage was terrible. So even though there wasn't a lot of growth, he created the growth because nobody wanted their old luggage. And you know, you could compare these discrete brainwave innovations um, across fields. So for example, in, uh, in table tennis in the early fifties, the worst player on the Japanese team at the Bombay table tennis championships was this guy, uh, Hiroshi Satoj. Who, and he, um, glued two foam, uh, expanses to both sides of a sandpaper, uh, table tennis bat. And nobody um, could cue off of the sounds because it changed the sound of the ball. Oh, it's like and having a silencer on exactly. A gun. It's like if so, if you put a suppressor on your paddle, um, suppressor. Just the fact that you use that word makes me think that you have a bunch of firearms hiding in your basement. But anyway, I can either confirm. I or digress. Deny. Right. <laughs> but but the the the, uh, the idea that the worst player on one of the lower rated teams would be the undisputed champion simply through an innovation that was that profound shows you what the power of one of the, these ideas is that the power laws are just so unbelievably in your favor. If you win that, uh, it makes it worthwhile. Or Dick Fosbury who went, uh, backwards over the high 1968. Jump. You got it. Very good. <laughs> Ridiculed and then mimicked <laughs> and eventually standard. Yeah. Uh, So in the case of, say, the, the umbrella or the luggage, uh, is there a process for trying to tackle and innovate in these areas along the lines of something you might find at, say, an IDEO or exercises that you guys do at Teal Capital when looking at different markets or trying to assess, say, an idea and its, its validity or promise in a market? Are there any particular questions, I guess, is what I'm asking, that you find very useful when trying to spot these these breakthrough ideas? Well, it depends in, um, situation by situation. So, for example, in science, I try to use various intellectual arbitrage techniques where if you have a bunch of smart people who've been focused on a problem, I try to look at what, as a group, their weaknesses are, where how, 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 how is uh, their bread buttered? What is it that they can't afford to say or think? Um, what, what might be an example? Well, so for example, in in uh, in, in theoretical physics, uh, there are all sorts of shibboleths where if you can't um, say that you believe uh, that quantum mechanics is intrinsically probabilistic, you're not a member of the club because it's assumed that you sort of can't accept a difficult reality. Um, or if you can't um, sign up for one of the major schools 
uh, you have no way to get funding because you, there's no one who will support your grant applications. So you start to look at what causes what should be a diverse portfolio of ideas to collapse in terms of the diversity where everybody starts representing the same point of view with tiny variations. If you're looking at a problem that's never been attempted, you don't want to use intellectual arbitrage because it's just blue sky. There's no reason that the first attempts uh, to think through the problem won't yield uh, fruit. But, you know, in the case of the umbrella, um, I would start to think about, well, what, what made what made me think or what made one think that this was a problematic object. So count the number of moving parts that in general, as things reach final form, they, they tend to get radically simple. So if there's too many moving parts, if, um, there's some innovation that's happened since the problem was originally considered. So for example, in the case of Oculus Rift and virtual reality, maybe virtual reality was considered, years before Oculus, but nobody had rethought it in the presence of economies of scale that bring the screens and smartphones down in price. And so suddenly you have the high quality screens that are affordable that way back when would have cost a prohibitive amount. So ask yourself, well, what's changed recently? Where is the object that currently inhabits the space violating some sort of aspect of canonical design? What do you mean by canonical design? Well, yeah. Let's look at nature. Um, if I look at the, there's a great bacteria, uh, great virus, um, called T4 bacteriophage. And if you look it up, it looks like a, a lunar lander. It's really cool. And, um, the genetic material is held in a capsule called a capsid that has the form of an icosahedron. And so you wonder something with some sides. 20 sides. There we go. <laughs> 20 sides is platonic solid. Wait and a second. What's a dodecahedron? 12. God damn it. All right. They're dual to each other. I might need to brush up on my Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> <laughs> die references. Okay. So please continue. So it's a little crazy to think that um, before Plato ever existed, nature had figured out this complicated 20 sided object. But because it was so natural at a mathematical level, even if it was complex, uh, nature found the canonical design, even though there was no canonical designer, there was no God given it, it, because it was a God given form. It didn't need to be thunk up, if you will, mm -hmm. by any individual or the recent discovery of grasshoppers that use gear mechanisms for jumping. Um, you would think we invented gears, but in fact, gears are such a natural idea that natural selection found it long before we did. So is, is this natural idea then roughly synonymous with canonical or is that, a yeah. does that have a different connotation? I mean, I, I sort of think about it. If we get visited by aliens from another planet who are pretty advanced, um, they're going to know about platonic solids. They're not going to call them platonic solids because they didn't have Plato. And in fact, they were known before Plato, but these forms that really don't have a, an inventor so much as a discoverer. Got it. Got these it, are got things it, that it. just sort of have to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. I took, I took us down the rabbit hole a little bit, but we were talking about umbrellas. Yeah. Uh, and the number of, elements or moving pieces is uh, maybe I'm that is a clue that something is wrong. Right. 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 It's, it's not as elegant as it should be. So I would, I would, for example, immediately think about, um, you know, let's say the Japanese and their love of origami and the mathematics of paper folding. So that would be a place that I might see whether I could mine, um, that silo of expertise for any application to the umbrella. Um, very often it's a question of being the first person to connect two things that have never been connected before. And that something that is a commonplace solution in one area is not thought of in another. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it, it, it involves recognizing when something is likely to allow an innovation, figuring out where the information might be. And as a last resort, thinking really hard uh, about 
what the form of the solution might be before you actually push yourself to be concrete. I think very often you see people get very impatient with hand waving. Well, that's a lot of hand waving for my taste. Well, if you stay practical, you'll probably be part of a lot of incremental uh, improvements, but you may never be part of one of these uh, moments where that idea changes everything.